Tom, I, I asked Battle of them the same questions. First, your reaction on the 1994 screenplay when you first auditioned for Clerks, when you first read it, and got an idea of the character. What was your initial reaction? Well, uh, I didn't get to read the script to audition. We just did uh, our own monologues for auditioning. Uh, then Kevin called me in for a callback, and the segment, the scene that he picked for me to do a reading again for the callback was the uh, independent contractor scene of Star Wars. Didn't know what the script was about. Could have been auditioning for porn for all I knew, you know. Although porn is not as well written as this. Yeah, and so. Um, when I then finally got the script and got to read it, I thought it was hilarious. I remember I was living in a house with a bunch of roommates uh, off campus in Rutgers University up in New Brunswick, and I would come down. This was during the time when the NBA Finals were going on, and the Knicks were in the were in the playoffs, rather. And I would come down to say, oh, yo, yo, go. Yeah, you got to listen to this line. They're like, shut up, man. Ewan's at the foul line. I'm like, he's going to miss. Listen to this joke. And so uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, the ending, the original ending where Dante, uh, spoiler alert, yeah. gets shot, um, I didn't like from that very beginning. And I even said that, but he's like, no, no. And Kevin explained uh, the, you know, how he wants to have a serious ending due to the fact that yes, it has to have some sort of meaning to this. So. Well, I think that changing the ending to what it is now is a good idea because at that time, a lot of those independent movies had the main character die. So that was like part of the course with independent film. So you guys kind of broke that norm. Right. Um, now, what, just a question, like um, going into it, like working with your co-stars, um, like relationship with, with uh, Jeff Anderson, relationship right. with Marilyn. Um, how was it? How was uh, working with them? Well, I had worked with Marilyn Gigliotti before. We had done a play before. As a matter of fact, the monologue I did for my audition was from a play called Wait Until Dark, which I played opposite her in that. Uh, as far as Jeff was, when we, you know, I didn't meet him until we started rehearsing, which we rehearsed uh, a month before shooting at night after Kevin was done with the, the, his shift at the quick stop we'd go over to the video store and go through different scenes and, and, and reading different scenes and stuff uh the chemistry was really weird because we immediately took to each other incredibly well we bounced off especially the rhythm of how kevin likes his dialogue read i think went really well for both of us and it's been like that ever since there's been years of gaps where we don't get in touch with each other and kevin brings us in for let's say well, the cartoon series or jay and son of bob strikes back these different appearances of, Ke of uh, dante and randall pick it right up. As a matter of fact, this past August when we were filming, we got into rehearsals first and then started filming Clerks 3. It was like getting on a, another bicycle again that we were fine, just a little oil on the chain and we're back to running it at, at full speed again, which is enjoyable. And I, I really look forward to seeing what the fans will think when the movie comes out. I've been told that's as of this airing, uh, June is the uh, alleged release date of Clerks 3. I'd love to, can't wait to see what the fans think. So the question, follow up, following up the original question, what was your reaction to the Clerks 3 screen for the first time? Oh. How uh, much did you know going in before Kevin, like, before you agreed to come back? Well, or? Kevin had a, a first draft of a Clerks 3 script about four years ago, or five years ago that we read, that uh, Jeff was uh, not con fully convinced to be a part of. And so that script, we then read years later at the for a charity event for a fundraiser for the First Avenue Playhouse. Uh, it was a ticketed event, two nights of reading this screenplay with different people playing different roles. Marilyn Gigliotti came back, uh, Diana Devlin and a few others came in to read the script. And so uh, it went really well and uh, it was a very darker kind of script. So when approaching it again and after Kevin had his heart attack, um, he approached uh, this the new cut or the new draft of the script with a different angle on it. Uh, Kevin's talked about this on social media before about, you know, the script is loosely based that Randall has a heart attack and decides, oh my God, I haven't done anything with my life. All I am is an owner of a convenience store. I, I should be, you know, I'm always watching films. Why can't I just make a film? And it, it's so funny and cute that he makes a de facto version of Clerks of a film. So that being said, it was really weird. It was like a time machine that you're in this kind of time loop of an alternate universe. And it's funny because, you know, the Loki, uh, show came out with these variant yeah, timelines right, and stuff. I'm right, like, this right. is kind of like a variant in a weird way. But in general, I think the fan base who love the original, especially, yeah. are gonna just absolutely embrace this new one. And last question for tonight: um, sure. Any, what's the, what, what is the future hold for your characters potentially in the Kevin Smith universe? And then, what do you have coming up? Anything that you want to uh, plug, promote, of your own personal uh, work? Sure. Uh, as far as the future after the Clerks Three uh, script, we'll see what happens. We'll see what the reaction is by the fan base reaction. And then as far as what I have coming up, I have a few projects that are in the works. There's, there's things that came out during the pandemic that were released. One, uh, a great film called Right Before Your Eyes about a man struggling with alcoholism. Uh, and then and his friends getting him out of that. And then another one is a, a, a film uh, 
Jay, that Jay, yeah, right, right, right. I see this Jay did this uh, yeah, uh, yeah. madness in the method. Uh, that this is Jay's uh, Jay rectorial debut. Uh, that was a lot of fun, and tons of people, including Kevin and Vinnie Jones. And that's still available. On Amazon. That's still available on Amazon. I mean, I here at the cons, I sell to the DVD copies and stuff, and the Blu-rays. Um, but that's another one. And then there's two other films I'm in talks with to work out for 2023 and 2024. Well, being uh, coming, I've, I've been coming to the Rhode Island Comic Con for many years now. I think this is my sixth time here. And the thing about it, A, the organization is really great to work with. You know, the alternate entertainment people are always really great to work with. Steve and his uh, staff are awesome. But also the, the, the city of Providence in general, it's such, a, it's such a wonderful city. You know, you can go to Fox Point and get some really great, you know, restaurants out there and, and arts and artisan kind of stores to find individual kind of things. But downtown is really great to do to do things. And this facility, this facility is really a, a great facility to have a show of this size to be a part of. The Omni Hotel that's connected directly to this has been very wonderful uh, in housing all of us uh, annoying celebrities. Um, but the people turn out, man. All of New England turns out, especially for this show. But we get people from Maryland and the Carolinas and people out from Chicago I met this weekend and stuff like that. So, you know, the the, the, the history and the reputation of the show has traveled beyond just the Providence area, which is great to see. And it's good to be back after such a long pause. I mean, we are in the business of mass gatherings. So this business got hit hard, especially those independent artists that are down on the um, exhibition floor and these individual vendors who that's how they make their living uh, i felt bad yes you can sell things online but it's not this community you know you don't get to cosplay and get to enjoy things like that and that's the kind of thing as i turn her yeah so it's that type of thing and as a as a fan of other guests as well that's why i love coming out as well so i just have a couple of questions i want to know i guess number one like your original reaction to when you Audition for Clerks in 1994 when you read the screenplay initially. Um, what was your thoughts on the material and the, uh, the subject matter of the character? Okay, so, well, when I auditioned, I actually didn't know what exactly I would be auditioning for. Um, we were just told that uh, a kid, and this is how it was quoted to me, a kid would be uh, holding auditions at the First Avenue Playhouse where I had actually done some shows. Um, it was after that audition that Kevin called me up, had me come down to the convenience store. I picked up the script. He said, read it, let me know what you think, and let me know. So I read it while I was at work, just sitting around one day, I worked in a salon, and uh, I was laughing. So I was like, I'm in. <laughs> the way you deliver his dialogue is is excellent in the, in the first film. Not many actors or actresses can deliver that much verbose dialogue at a time. Thank so, you. And yeah. Second question, to, to follow up that is when you got the first three screenplay, how did he approach you with that uh, with that concept, and what was your reaction to that screenplay? Uh, well, one thing, it's like he. <laughs> I got a text from someone. Now I never had his phone number, so it's like, but I got a text. He's like, hey, Marilyn, this is Kevin. And I'm like, I think I know which Kevin, but I'm like, so I texted him back. And I'm like, I know a few Kevins. So okay, is this like, you know, can you verify which Kevin? And he's like, Smith. And I'm like, okay, I thought so. Um, and so he sent me the script. So I was excited for that alone. And I don't remember if it was like the same night I, that I read it or if it was maybe the next day or something like that and I told them I laughed I cried I hysterically laughed I hysterically cried I know you can't spoil too much but if you had a pick because now Dante has a few love interests uh excluding the donkey <laughs> <laughs> um can you give us any hints as to where your relationships go in the future and a little bit of tea for Cook Street uh, and a release of like when it when when you know when it's coming out um so we have been told and I'll just say tentatively because anything can change. June. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> and as far as like the other stuff, I can't. I can't. You know if there's anything in the works for another thing after Coach Three that you might. Um, as far as with Kevin, yeah. uh, or like a possible fourth series. Oh, okay. So I mean, yeah, nothing, nothing with Kevin. Um, and I mean, you know, COVID's kind of put. A hit on a lot of things. Um, personally, I have 
um, film, TV project. Honestly, it's, I don't know where it falls on the, on the spectrum there. But I did something about, I think it was five years ago, in Al Albuquerque, Santa Fe, New Mexico. And it's based upon a true story in the 1800s period piece of this nun who was very significant um, and is the daughter of immigrants and I play her mother. Uh, and I had to audition in Italian. I don't know Italian. Uh, <laughs> but you learn how to say certain things really quick. Um, and so I was contacted. That they're going to be doing some pickup shots in December and uh, they wanted to know my availability and basically what they did is they got the approval of the Vatican to make her the saint of immigrants, um, the, the nun, and her name is Sister Blandina. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, where can we keep a lookout for that? Like when? I don't know where that will be. Uh, so the end of the Santa Fe Trail is what it's called. Um, but yeah, you follow me on social media, you know, I, I keep everybody abreast as to what's happening in my life. <laughs> We're starting. So welcome to Rhode Island Comic Con. This is Jeff Anderson of Clerks Fame and Clerks 2 and Clerks 3. Maybe I got to turn my hat around so they know that who works. I am. That works. <laughs> I think the laugh works. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my question is, um, is there ever a time when you're not chewing gum? I'm always chewing gum and, and you know, it started in the movie. I would chew gum because I was scared about the dialogue. And if I chew gum, I found that it gives me an extra second to come up with the line. It was completely done for nerves. So if you watch Clerks 1, I chew gum the whole time because it slowed me down from talking and would help me if I forgot a line, I could... There's my tip to all you actors out there that aren't very good like me, chew gum. That's actually genius. That was a joke question, but that, that, that's really smart. I mean, so it's like, memorable. When we shot two, I think I had gum most of the time. And in three, I said, I'm not going to chew gum. And I'll tell you why. Because like in all my pictures and all my stuff, my mouth is always funny because I'm chewing gum. Yeah. So like when they, the publicity department sends me the pictures, then, you know, they send you the pictures and say, are you okay with this? All of them, my mouth is all, because I'm always chomping on gum. For me, that's like, that's your character. I mean, it makes another dimension to your character, which is great. That's exactly what it was. I was thinking about the character. <laughs> uh, for my first question is, what was your a reaction to the Clerks 1 screenplay from 1994? How Kevin kind of roped you into it? Because I know, I don't know if you were auditioning before. Yeah, no. Um, I, I, Kevin and I went to high school together. We had a lot of the same friends, although Kevin and I didn't really hang out together. We had a lot of the same friends. And I, one of my friends was actually supposed to play Dante. And he was originally, he would, yeah, Ernie. He was originally written in for that. So I think I was at Ernie's house or somebody's house, a party, and the script was there and I was kind of thumbing through it. I was like, holy shit, there's a lot of bad words in here. Who put this together? And he was like, Kevin Smith. I'm like, he's fucked up. <laughs> so I went to the auditions with my friend Ernie just to kind of watch the whole thing. And I wound up just making fun of him. I was like, you can't act, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, let's see you audition. I was like, give me that script. I'll get up there. And I asked Kevin, I'm like, who should I audition as? And he said, well, I wrote this part for Jay, but I'm not sure Jay will be able to pull it off. So I auditioned for Jay. Would that have not been a different movie? Yeah, yeah that would. Jay that... chomping on gum all day, <laughs> like, what's my fucking line? <laughs> so, so then you went, into, you went back to Clerks 2. Was that an easy sell to bring you back for a Clerks 2 or a hard sell? Because I'm normally not to. It took 12 years, but I think, to do Clerks 2. And I think he started talking to me about it eight years before that, before I committed to doing it. Yeah. yeah. I was like, man, my jaw's going to hurt. There's a lot of lines in there. That's a lot of gum I'm going to have to chew. So how different was the Clerks 3 screenplay when you initially read it to where it is now? I, I feel like you elevated the, the course of the there was, there was another draft of Clerks 3 that existed before this. And I think it's safe to say now, because I know I've heard Kevin come out and say it, that it didn't sort of feel right for Clerks. He, he wrote it at kind of a weird time. He said he was in a dark place. And it was a dark movie. And is one give us any insight to the script? Because I know we read some of the pages from it. Yeah, I don't want to do that, because I, I, I don't know what he's done. I, I pay very little attention to this. I do not want to piss him off and say anything that shouldn't be said, because Maybe down the road it's going to be a comic book or something. Right, sure, There's always sure. talk about that's doing true, that. 
So, and, and truth be told, I don't remember a whole lot of it. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now you have a much bigger role for Clerks 3, and it's kind of like a personal story. Is it personal for you? Did you do anything different to get into the mindset of Randall because being the character in kind of a different light? Like, there's a whole process for me to get into the no. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's again, it's always nerve wracking. I get scared coming up to these things, like especially this one, Clerks 3. Randall is a chatty motherfucker. And I'm like, why does he have to have so much dialogue? But uh, we get through it. You're very interesting to watch on screen. Oh, thanks. <laughs> with, uh, Brian O'Hallon is great. Can you just say a quick word or two about like working with your scene partners? Um, Brian, yeah. And um, I don't know who else you work with. So I guess how you work with Ryan, what do you, you know? Yeah, it's um uh, after we shot Clerks 3, um I, I kind of figured Kevin's never gonna ask me to do another one of these, so we're gonna call it good here. And uh, you know, I, I, I wrote Brian a nice card and I, I, I really meant a lot of the things I said. I probably wouldn't have done the movies without Brian. Because as not being an actor, I was uncomfortable and nervous about doing it. And I know, you know, Brian and Marilyn, these these guys had all done theater and stuff, so it was intimidating, but Brian is such an easygoing, nice guy to work with, and we just kind of have good chemistry. And uh, without him, I, I wouldn't have done anything other than clerks. I, I think it's great that you don't have the acting experience because you, you, you kind of come in and because you, you, your character comments on everything. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of the running like it's like it's like Mystery Science Theater, yeah. and you're like this movie, this is that. Movie. And it's kind of like a you know a meta thing um, with that. So right. uh, I guess. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, I had a business. I owned a business until 2019, and uh, since then I've been hanging out chewing gum. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to get sponsored by gum. Um, <laughs> Chulies gum. Yeah. So <laughs> Chulies hurts your jaw. We we actually had Chulies in number three, and somebody gave me that. Like, I was like, all right, I'm ready for a piece of gum. It was a scene I didn't know my dialogue. <laughs> I'm like, oh, give me that gum now. And uh, the, the Chulies is very hard on your jaw. I, I, they need to work on that. They need to work on that. Uh, get that recipe done. Rhode Island. Rhode Island's fun. I actually, um, I've only been in the Clerks movies, but I, uh, I was on my way to London one time, and I stopped in New Jersey, and this guy sent me a script uh, called Finding London, and he wanted me to be in it. And I was like, how random is that? I happen to be in New Jersey. I'm on my way to London. Uh, and it was a local guy and I came out here to Providence and we shot this uh, little tiny film. Yeah, just for, you know, I haven't even seen it. He showed it, oddly enough, he made a second movie and he showed me that, but I haven't seen the one I'm in. So maybe I got cut, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've been here in Rhode Island before. I love it, it's, it's a nice little town. Yeah, I live in California. I live about an hour outside of LA. But it's, it's weird though, like when you do an event like this, you kind of come in and go out and you don't get to see a lot of the town. But I've been here before. Brown is beautiful. I think it's a beautiful town. Somebody told us that. I think the driver from the car told us that if you're looking for a good place. There you go. There you go. Well, Italian food is East Coast. You don't do that on the West Coast. So I like to get Italian food when I'm here. Right on, right on. Jeff, it's great to talk to you. Thank you, sir. And I get your insights and everything. Thank you, sir. I heard you say the same thing to Brian, man. <laughs> you got to come up with some new lines. All right, folks, Clerks 3, don't throw rocks at me after.